Today we're going to talk about FreeNAS. I'm going to take you from installation to usability and familiarize you with the interface. So let's get started. All right, first thing you need to do is go to FreeNAS, his website, where you can download it. They got a big old download button right here. Uh, obviously, you can go and download. So we'll go to download. Scroll on past this. You can fill out this information if you choose and then click I clicked the no thank you I filled this out many times so they, they have my information already um, we're gonna get the current version which is 11.2 u7 download that and boom that'll give you an ISO to install so moving on from there let's talk a little about FreeNAS all right so what is FreeNAS FreeNAS is a network storage device. Um, it's really a, a great choice if you are a, a DIY IT person or if you're a, a, a business that wants to get into a good high quality storage system for your files and, and you want to do it for on the uh, affordable note. Uh, it really is high quality. I mean, honestly, FreeNAS is capable of handling large organizations, so um, you know we can use multiple terabytes of storage. And they they have a TrueNAS product, which is their their um, corporate version. Um, I use the FreeNAS. I've used it for many years. It's great. It's pretty easy to use. It gets easier and easier every day, uh, every with every release, which is awesome. It has a lot more capabilities than just a network storage device, but we're gonna show you just the basics. One thing I wanna do is like, this tutorial is gonna show you the getting started, how to install it on your own hardware. Um, you can basically get an old used PC and get running with FreeNAS, pretty simple. It does need eight gigs of RAM minimum to get going. So if you got an old PC that has eight gigs of RAM, that would be a great choice to get started in FreeNAS. Drop a couple hard drives in there uh, and you can get going. Now, FreeNAS can be installed on USB drives and I recommend that if you're gonna do a build that you do it that way. Let me just show you here. This is just a flash drive. So. I recommend you get at least two of these guys for your free NAS installation because it will do a mirror on these and then if one of these flash drives dies because flash drives are, aren't really that great when it comes to long-term read writes but here's the problem with this guy is it's kind of big what you really want is something like this guy this is a little uh, sand disc one. Ooh, oh, I just lost it. <laughs> I dropped it. <laughs> this is a little sand disc guy. It's tiny. Um, and you can get two of those. I recommend getting like a, at least a 16, maybe a 32. You don't really need that big for free NAS, but uh, it's pretty much easy and cheap to get them now. So the reason why I recommend these little guys is you can plug them in to your computer on the back of it and if you have to move the computer or the free nas box or anything you your your risk of hitting this bumping this or messing with these if they're a little bitty like this is much less so definitely think about getting that you get one of these guys sticking out the back of your two of these guys sticking out the back of your computer or the front of your computer or whatever you you can hit them you can bend them break them so using these guys is a much much uh, you know kind of safer option so that being said let's go ahead and get back to this now if you want to go ahead and skip all this and get your own free NAS pod product you can go to Amazon and Amazon sells free NASs and they're relatively inexpensive this guy here is a free NAS mini. I, I bought them. I use them. Um, this is a great product. Uh, it's a thousand dollars. Comes without discs, but uh, you know you can put four four drives in there. Take a look at that. 
it even has the options to be able to put uh, um, some SSDs in there for the caching capabilities of FreeNAS, which we're not going to go into in this video. Maybe some other video will go into to that sort of stuff. Um, they have versions that have more discs in it that you can buy with them, but uh, this is a good option if you don't want to build your own PC and you want a high quality certified hardware. Boom. I'll, I'll put a link to this in, in the show notes so that you can uh, go there and check it out yourself. Um, if you go back here, you will notice that there, there are there are free NASs. You can you can buy them with even drives already, eight terabyte drive. Well, this is currently unavailable, but typically you can get them with drives. Now it's going to be more expensive than say this guy or even this guy, um, but it's really way more capable. Um, they have the XL also, which is a slightly larger one, which this guy is pretty awesome because it can do. A lot more discs so that being said we're gonna go into how to do this on on our own I'm gonna actually do this in a virtual environment rather just so I can walk you through the installation a couple other things I really don't recommend virtualizing FreeNAS uh, unless you have some very specific do it in some very specific ways uh, typically you'll do this on some hardware you already have a commute old computer, like I said, it just needs eight gig of RAM or more and a couple hard drive spaces. And the thing is, when you install hard drives in it, you want to make sure that you're doing, you know, basically the same drive. So if you have a terabyte drive, you want to make sure you have duplicate exact same drives. That'll make things easier. I'm going to show you different configurations. So let's get started on that. And here we go. All right, so here is my virtualized machine. I'm going to boot this guy up. And hopefully you can see that up on my Proxmox. And you'll see here, booting off the CD. By the way, uh, FreeNAS is based off of FreeBSD, which is a uh, uh, a Unix-like operating system. Um, first up is go ahead and hit one to enter the installer. You can do a serial console installer um, as one, so if it's headless, that's one thing. So here it's gonna take just a minute to uh, figure out what's going on in the hardware. That, Like I said, this is virtualized. Um, maybe I can make this just a little bigger. Can I make it a little bigger? Maybe not. All right, it's going to be big enough. So it is doing its thing right now. <clears throat> okay, so now we're at the first step on installation. Now you have these options, and we're going to choose one, which is install. Now I created two 32 gig drives and a couple uh, 256 gig drives on this. Um, the the 32 gig drives are to represent these little flash drives. And so I'm going to use those in a mirror. So just pretend here that that's two flash drives. They will show up. You can hit the space bar and the down arrow space bar to select your two drives that you want to use. And then go ahead and you can tab around here. That'll give you the OK or cancel. So hit OK. Now, it's going to give you a warning. Hey, this is going to erase everything typical stuff you're installing operating system on these flash drives so don't use flash drives that you need <laughs> just because anything that's on there is going to be wiped clean so just keep that in mind go ahead and yes you're going to get a password you need to give it a password and then okay now free nas is capable of either either uefi or bios in this particular case I've got this set up as BIOS. Uh, your, your hardware may vary. So we boot this guy up and literally the installation of FreeNAS takes just a brief amount of time. And so assuming everything goes great, uh, it's going to automatically mirror those drives. And um, <clears throat> it's, 
so that those two flash drives, flash drives, if you will, are, are going to be mirrors of each other. So if one of those flash drives dies or fails, you don't lose the operating system. You can just shut it down, pull the drive out, put a brand new one in, boot it back up, and then mirror over to it. It'll, it'll, you can redo the, the mirror and it'll auto and pick it up and boom, you're up and running. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, also to keep in mind, if you are running on flash drives, they do wear out. So it's a good idea to just maybe have a second one or a third one, if you will, on handy. Just, you know, maybe just tape it to your box. And if something ever pops up the air, that it's there, then then you can you can take a look and see which one it is, and go ahead and replace it, uh, and everything will be golden. So it is still set on step one, and I'm going to kind of speed this through. All right, here we are. It's back into our installation. It is has succeeded. We'll go go ahead and just hit enter. And then go ahead and reboot. And this guy will boot up into FreeNAS, the uh, console. This will take just a second to reboot it. We'll see what's happening here. Okay, she is booted up. And uh, so the first thing I want to tell you is when you boot these guys up. Let's see if I can go ahead and make this bigger. That's kind of in the way. When, when you look at the console of FreeNAS, it has a couple options that you can use to uh, do things from the console. Like number one is configure network. Uh, you know, one through three is really network related. Actually, really, honestly, one through six is all re network related. Um, Seven, reset your password. Uh, you can set it back to defaults. You can go into the shell if you need to. You can reboot it and shut it down. And then it also tells you the IP address of the web interface to FreeNAS. And the IP address, it, the web interface is gonna be where you do 99% of your FreeNAS time. So let's go, <clears throat> let's go ahead and take a look at that. Let me go here. And that IP address. All right. And let's go ahead and just make this guy a little bigger for you, everybody. So here we are in the beginning. This is your basic interface for FreeNAS, the login screen. Now there's still a button here for the legacy interface. Uh, You'll see probably a lot of videos that show this UI that looks completely different. Um, that's the legacy interface. The new interface is, has been been rewritten. They've kind of been working on it for a little while. It's you know ready for prime time, and everybody should be using it now. So your pass your username is going to be root, and then the password that you picked, and then go ahead and just log in. <clears throat> 